And David, if you can tell me your your letter grade for the pick of Trask, for mm -hmm. the pick of Hainsey, and then a letter grade for the overall three rounds that we've seen thus far from Jason Light and company. Yeah, I think I give I, I think I give Trask and Hainsey both Bs. You know what I mean? Um, again, anytime we're talking about depth and you're talking about role players, that's it's just kind of a kind of a middle of the road. I know C is kind of more middle of the road. Uh, I see what they're doing with the Kyle Trask pick. I don't necessarily disagree with that. I'm not as high on Kyle Trask as as some people are, but I see the tools. I see uh, some of the 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 intangibles that a team could be attracted to. So I understand kind of where they're going. I go back to the draft, uh, the drafting of Sean Murphy Bunting. You know, in in the moment, I didn't quite know a lot about him. I didn't understand quite where they were going to go with that pick. But we did some homework. We did some reading. We did some research from people who had done more homework on him and kind of said, okay, here's let's look at what they're going to do. Because at the end of the day, that's what you're drafting. You're not drafting a guy because of what he can't do. You're drafting him because of what he can do. So let, that's what you want to look at. You want to say, what can he do? How does that fit this team's future? How does that fit this team's mission statement? And that's how you start to understand the thought process, plus on top of what they tell you after they make the pick. That also helps as well. So having all that in mind, you understand the direction. I just feel like personally, I would have gone I would have gone later. I probably would have honestly held off at quarterback until day three, you know, looking at round four, maybe a late third round trade uh, back into the end of the third round if one of those guys, if a Davis Mills uh, was still available or something like that. So for me personally, that's that's kind of where I go there. But again, Jason Light is in the war room for a reason, and I'm behind the Zoom camera for a reason. Uh, but personally, that's where I would have gone. Quinn Miners was my favorite uh, offensive lineman still on the board there at the end of the second round. That's where I kind of wanted the Buccaneers to go. He was still on the board in the third round, which kind of goes to show what James was talking about. Obviously, you know, there, there's a reason that he was probably still on the board there in the third round. I don't understand it, but every other NFL GM seems to understand it because he's, you know, he, he was there all the way till the end of the third round uh, when the Denver Broncos came in and swooped him up. Uh, when they picked Hainsey, same thing. I wanted Quinn Miners. I know there's a lot of people, uh, there were a lot of Bucks fans on social media that wanted Quinn Miners, but they see something in Hainsey that they don't see in Quinn. And that is, you know, really probably that, a lot of that versatility and some of that leadership at a big time program. Quinn isn't ever going to kick out to tie or to tackle, even if you need him to. He's a center or a guard, and that's pretty much it. So if you're looking for five position uh, versatility, you got it there. I see the upside. So again, I give it a B. I don't give it an A because. I wouldn't have done it, which means I can't 100% love it if I wouldn't have done it myself.